Welcome back, everybody, to our part two discussion on the best and worst movies of the year. Uh, my name is Mr. Sunday. Movies, as you probably know, if you're on my YouTube channel. And with me is Josh Lewis of Josh Lewis Reviews, an excellent YouTuber who we've done. We just completed the first half of our kind of uh, 2014 blockbuster movies discussion. So if you haven't seen that, you probably want to go over to his uh, channel. Josh, what's your channel URL thing? Or maybe I'll put a link in. Or... You can totally put a link, but it is uh, YouTube slash... Cywell Productions. Don't even ask. <laughs> S i w e l Productions. Awesome. I'll link that below as well, so you guys can go and check that out. If you need, if need definitely to. check that out. Hey everyone, we are hanging out. <laughs> we we certainly are. We cover what do we cover? Most surprising films, best hero and villain, best performances, all sorts of stuff. So well worth checking out and also subscribing. So do that. Be a nice person. Don't be a jerk. That's my motto. So, you know. That's a great motto. It is. I just made it up. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, is it your turn for a category? Is it my turn for a category? I think it is. And sure. if it is, we're going to start with um, the best limited release. I don't know how many limited releases you have seen this year. Maybe not I've many. seen very little, but I've got one particular in mind. You got one? All right, good, because it's probably not one. It's probably not mine. I can pretty much, cool. probably guarantee it's not mine, so you awesome. can go first on this one. All right. Transformers 4. No. Uh, <laughs> Snow <laughs> Snowpiercer. The, uh, the highest grossing of the year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The highest grossing and worst movie ever. Ah, it's yeah, right, whatever. Right. We'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, Snowpiercer for me, it was absolutely incredible. It's been delayed for like, what, two years now or something? Yeah. And I'm like talking crazy. about cutting it down and, and all sorts of things. And look, it's completely bonkers. Uh, oh, it's, it's not it's for everybody. Wild. Yeah. Like, I, I, I was I, not ready for it. Yeah, that's it. Like, I, I couldn't hi like highly recommend it to everybody because I know that people would go and watch it and then come back and be like, why did you make me watch that? So <laughs> yeah, because it, it's totally weird. Yeah. And, but it, it it works in the most like absurd way. Yeah, it's it's so strange. Mm. But it yeah, it's it, it's great. And um, the thing that I love most about it is that it is um, in all sense of the word, it's a blockbuster. Yeah, it's just it's a it's a blockbuster made outside of our studio system. Mm -hmm. So you know the weirdness that you would get in art house filmmaking doesn't need to be gone because you know these guys didn't have a studio breathing down their neck saying it's got to be pg-13 it's got to be pg-13 yeah you know so they, they, they didn't have to to edit you know in the script phase which is what a lot of people have to do is which is where you get something like the amazing spider-man 2 where you can yeah. just tell that a studio executive helped write that movie <laughs> that's right exactly yeah like just... right so with this movie all that weirdness all that the um you know the, that foreign coolness that that came from these filmmakers is totally present in these films because mm. i know it was threatened to be cut like you said there was uh weinstein said he was going to cut yeah like a half hour of it or something and replace it with narration which would have uh, been terrible god no yeah yeah, and, and it would have been like all the cool, like, calm, dramatic scenes as well. Yeah, that's it. And, so, and you know. we, we've, we've talked about Chris Evans earlier in, in the first part of this video, which you should all go check out and subscribe and whatnot. But Chris Evans <laughs> is, is amazing. And if you, you get to really see a different side of, uh, you know, his kind of acting ability, he's, yeah, he's terrific. Well, everybody's terrific in it. And look, some of the, I would even say some of the special effects aren't great in parts because it is lower budget than, you know. Yeah, it's definitely stuff. lower budget. Yeah, but it doesn't. It certainly doesn't uh, hurt the film in in any way. Yeah. No. Yeah. There, there's a, there's only a, a a couple moments, right? Like maybe two. I can only think of two. Yeah. Like the the bugs and the maybe the snow outside sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it looks a little CGI-ish. Yeah. The bugs especially. Yeah. Actually. That's it. Yeah. But it's still like gross and weird and and whatever. Like it's still it still works. So yeah. What? Yeah, and it's and the the thing that I especially loved the most about it was that. Um, was the train? It's all in the location. Mm -hmm. The it it works it works so well as like giving you a sense of like um claustrophobia, mm -hmm. obviously for it being so enclosed. Yeah. But these guys are just like powering through, you know, train carts. Yeah. But while they're powering through train carts, they're also powering through like society in the sense that these carts each like capture part of our culture. You know, there's. There's nightclubs, there's, you know, sushi bars, yeah. there's schools, there's farms, there's everything yeah. in these train carts. It's so weird, yet, you know, on a production design level, it's probably the best movie we're going to see this year. Sure. I, w I, w I would want to see this nominated for best production design. I'd, 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 I'd absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I was just thinking about it in my head, what, all the ones they, they walk through. Like, what is it? There's the, the fish one, the aquarium one as well. 
Yeah. I, like, I, I, I brought up in my review that I would watch a movie of just a guy giving a tour of this train. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Like, it's, it's, so, yeah. it's, so, it's so well made and so fascinating. Yeah. Just this, just the location. Yeah. And so the fact that, you know, they're telling, you know, a, a good a good story as well. And they're, you know, they, they have a very strong political message. Mm-hmm. You know, so the fact that they're doing that is just bonuses for yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> abso- absolutely, yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's a very interesting movie, and I was a little upset that it only went limited release, yeah. but it definitely deserves uh, to be regarded as one of the best in the limited release. Definitely. And it's sort of like a video game in the sense that there's different, like, the, when they're going through the trains for levels and, and whatnot, but in a good way, because yeah. there aren't any good video game movies. But yeah, that's my kind of plebeian kind of assessment of that movie so yeah Yeah. no it's it's totally fair it's 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 definitely um you know a great aspect of the film yeah cool so what about you for best limited release you saw quite a few best limited release i feel like i have to say boyhood okay because um you know boyhood is probably going to be on my top 10 of the year Mm. it's it's absolutely fantastic most people for those of you who don't know about boyhood um the main gimmick it has going on is that it was shot over 12 years Mm. and that in two and a half hours, you actually watch a narrative of the same child go from about age six to age 18. Mm. Um, so just in that, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, where, because you've never really seen that. You know, you, you get a glimpse of it on TV. I don't know if you ever watched Mad Men. I have, yeah, yeah. But he, through Mad Men, through all the seasons they've had, you've watched uh, little Sally Draper grow up. Mm. Like, she started being, like, 9 or 10 years old, and now she's, like, six, you know, 16, 17. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like it hasn't happened before, but you've just never seen it happen on screen like this. No. So, yeah. it, it's nuts, and just for that reason alone, it's a movie that deserves to be talked about. Mm-hmm. So, the fact that it's such a good movie is sort of incredible. Mm. The fact that they could shoot, you know, two scenes every year, and it be such a consistent movie it's very non-narrative it's not much of a plot really you just sort of watch this kid grow up yeah it's, it's not like um, they're not really big key events that they have to they have to hit it's it's, it's literally like just observing someone is that really how yeah it is, it's just it, it's yeah you, every once in a while you come in and you you watch some scenes you get some character moments um so the, the fact that it works as a cohesive movie is is incredible a miracle yeah. um yeah, it, it doesn't. It almost doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, but no, the movie really, really works, and um, the fact that it's like I don't know if you you know, but it's been like one of the highest critically acclaimed movies ever. Yeah. It, it, um, near perfect it, score. It, and... it, it is amazing. Um, and it, it probably is, you know, in a more objective sense of the word, it's probably the best movie. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. Ever made. I, I mean, I, I don't like using the word objectively because movies, again, aren't, you know, like that. But, yeah. you know, most people are going to say Boyhood's the best limited release. But I actually saw a movie uh, called The F Word, which is um, a movie coming out of Canada here. It was at TIFF last year mm-hmm. um, with uh, Daniel Radcliffe, okay. Mr. Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Harry Potter, and, yeah. Um, and uh, Zoe Kazan and also, um, I don't know if you know Adam Driver know, from, yeah, Girls. from Girls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's also uh, cast in Star Wars. He is, yeah. Uh, it, it's all three of those in like a really, really um, interesting sort of. Uh, I want to say it's a rom com, but it, it sort of like avoids rom commy tropes, so it's not really. Is it the uh, one where he's in the friend zone or something with the yes, girl? Is that what's yes, because because yeah, the, the, yeah the, the play on words with the f word is it's supposed to be friend. Very clever, um, Hollywood. Well done. Very clever. Well, I, I mean, it, it's a fine title. It, it's yeah. what it is in Canada. For a, it's going to be confusing for a lot of people because in America they actually change the name to avoid the R rating. Oh, okay. What what is it? So they they changed it to What If, which is oh, okay, a right. way worse title. Boo, Hollywood! <laughs> <laughs> You've really, you really blew it this time. Yeah. But no, that 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 movie I just saw a couple weeks ago, and I I actually almost didn't believe how good it was. Cool, it was, awesome. Um, yeah, very very well made. Um, you know, tells a uh, a really good story for people. I don't I don't I don't even want to guess your age, but I feel like you're younger. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. That's yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, for, for people like us, that's gonna be uh, it, it's a great comedy. It's sort of like when Harry met Sally. Yeah. But done for more modern people, and it, it definitely tackles, you know, thing how things like social media and phones have hit our relationships, and it's it's a very unique sort of exploration of relationships in that sense. And yeah, above all, they're real people. I find a lot of time in rom coms, a lot of people act very cartoony. And That's out it. Of, they're out like of caricatures person. of 
um, exactly yeah, of real people. Yeah. You don't believe that it's hard to almost relate to people like that. Yeah, you're like, you know, this isn't real. This is a Hollywood romance. That's yada, right. Yada. Yeah, you've got a with wacky, this movie, a wacky best friend and whatever. And a <laughs> yeah, sassy, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, with this movie, it specifically goes out to avoid that. Okay, that it wants mm-hmm. you to know that these are real people with real motivations and lives, and you know, just yeah. because. Just because of that, it's a movie uh, worth watching. And I, I don't think it's going to come at a limited release and go anywhere, probably other than Canada. <laughs> no, I think it I just mean, came I... out in the UK, actually, because I just heard a, a, a review of it. Do you know uh, Kermode and Mayo? It's a really good podcast. Um, oh, yes. BBC I podcast, do yeah. So he just reviewed it, and he said pretty much what you said. Yeah, where it's... Interesting. It's fantastic, yeah. And Daniel Radcliffe's really come a long way, because if you look at those early Harry Potter movies, like, he's terrible. Like, but then it, <laughs> yeah. around like movie four, you could see. I don't know whether he's started doing some acting school, uh, acting classes or whatever. But they, he gets progressively better, and I think he's he's, he's showing oh, he's, that he's, he's going to be real around good for now. a while, hopefully. So I, I think I think the theater really helped him, like going and doing the stage acting that he did. I think that yeah. really helped him. The one where he was naked with the horse. Oh, I, I I actually don't know anything about that one other than that he was naked with a horse. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I think that's what it's called, naked with a horse. So. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he did he did more than one play. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that's just the one everyone knows. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, it's yeah. called Equus, so, yeah. I believe the play. I think I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the naked with a horse. One. He's he's naked with a horse. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Irrelevant. <laughs> cool. Okay, weirdest moment in a movie for you it could be good, weird, bad, weird can be whatever you like i feel like you haven't seen this one sure so it's probably um, it's probably true <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say transcendence i haven't probably no probably I, the yeah, weirdest that. the weirdest moment um i was really looking forward to transcendence i really kind of bummed out that it's no good i mean maybe oh, i love it it's so it's so bad uh, it's so bad it's unbelievable yeah. um like i i was kind of in shock watching the movie i couldn't believe how many wrong decisions they made like mm. every wrong decision throughout, it was like playing that game where you you make a choice. Like it's like those uh, those books, choose your own adventure books, but you chose death every time. <laughs> but there's this part where he basically becomes like super Jesus, computer Jesus. Good, good. I'm liking this. And he he like can cure people with stuff Nano- for no is it, reason. Is it nanotechnology. It's sort of nanotechnology ish, but he, he, he like brings someone who was like really, really hurt, like violently hurt mm. back to life. Okay. And y- you like watch nanobites sort of like fill in all the little spots. And on the side, you just get shots of like Johnny Depp as like, uh, a, you know, like a sentient computer being just mm. standing there. Like he, it's basically like you're watching jesus do his miracles but with johnny depp you know hanging out watching it via skype <laughs> it's so it's the it, weirdest thing yeah yeah and that's a lot of the movie is it with johnny depp's like on a screen and... a lot of it uh, a lot yeah, of it yeah. is just him tuning in via skype while weird shit happens around him i thought it was and... i thought it was gonna be I saw, I saw that a lot in the trailer but i thought oh they'll probably just he'll probably appear at some point he'll be some kind of nanobot robot man or whatever but no mostly skype screens cool great sounds really good yeah uh, he he is he and then he's like plug me into the internet because now i'm i'm jesus but i want to be the internet jesus and then he like starts threatening people with y2k i guess and i <laughs> it, it's it, oh, it's it's so ridiculous that i almost wanted to like it because it made no sense but is it I, I, it's I, too I, boring though to like is that it, that's is that it, it is? that's it yeah. that's the thing is yeah. it's it's so weird but at the same time, you you feel like a weird movie can be endearingly weird, mm-hmm, where you're mm-hmm. like, oh, that's so batshit crazy, I kind of dug it. This one, you can't, because it's it's so boring. You're sitting there, and you want to <laughs> fall asleep watching the weirdest things happen. <laughs> <laughs> what a combination. Weird and boring. Jeez. <laughs> Mad. They should put that on the poster. Weird and boring. Josh Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, like, it's it's just, it's like, it wants to be a Nolan movie so bad. Yeah. It's a, is, is it a... shot well? Because it's... No, no, oh, it's shot so he, he's poorly. He's a cinematographer, though, right? He's an Oscar-winning cinematographer. And See, it's that blows of... my mind. I, I, it's... That... <laughs> it's one of the worst shot movies of the year. Wow. 
That's, uh... Be- because he doesn't understand what the camera should be pointing at. At least, I guess, you know, this guy can make stuff look cool. Yeah. In, like, a sense where he can frame things right. Mm. But, you know, he didn't have Chris Nolan there to be like, well, you know, that does- shot doesn't make sense because that's not what we're trying to tell in this story. <laughs> so without someone like that there, you just have this guy who <laughs> just is like, I'm gonna make, uh... A story about internet Jesus, and I'm gonna shoot Johnny Depp via Skype, and you know who cares about themes or or narrative coherence? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Man, so that, and then he's <laughs> sorry, go and on. then he has a triple twist ending. I feel like I could talk about this movie a lot. There's a triple sure. twist ending. Okay, well I'm kind of I want to now tell me. I want to know. <laughs> I mean, you you want to know? I do. Yeah. Okay. So she she saves Johnny Depp. Space by Jesus by making internet him Internet Jesus. Jesus. Yep, good. Yeah, so he, he's Internet Jesus now. And then everyone's like, maybe Internet Jesus isn't a bad, like, isn't a good thing. Maybe he's trying to, like, take over the world and kill humans and stuff. Like real Jesus. And, Sorry, not really. That's fine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe he's trying to do that. And yeah. then and then people are like, oh, no, 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 he, he, he's not doing that, I swear. Like, look, he's he's helping people. He's curing people. And then he sort of starts acting. Right then, he starts sort of, like, acting kind of, like, suspicious. And then people are like, ooh, maybe he is doing that. So that's one of the twists. It's like, oh my god, maybe he is doing it. And then there's another twist after that where the whole time he was a good guy. He was just trying to help. Oh. So why do people think he wasn't being internet Jesus? It's because, like, he, he was too powerful. It's like one of those things where you look and you're like, oh, this guy, he's like, okay, this is gonna sound even weirder. He, he's like making zombies. Okay. Like he's reanimating like, dead bodies. Sort of like he's bringing those people back to life, and now they're changed, and they love him. He they become like Jesus followers. Yeah, they're like Johnny Depp fans. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like Johnny Depp fans, but Johnny Depp fans that are like willing to do even more stuff for him. So people start getting like really weirded out, and like the good guy. You don't really know who's the good guys because Morgan Freeman doesn't even know where he is for most of the movie. <laughs> sure, he good. feels like they they they're like Morgan Freeman. It's eight a.m. Time to shoot your stuff, and you're like. <laughs> Gets up and he <laughs> he's like, "Where's that script again?" <laughs> anyway, we, we've talked about this movie a lot. Sure. We should, what's weirdest mo- moment for you? <laughs> I wish I wish I could converse with you on that because I feel like that's something I really would. Yeah, I have to watch that now. That sounds amazing. Th- that's the, the weirdest movie I've seen this cool. year. Cool. Well, for me, it, this this is a good movie, but there was a moment in it where I just kind of left confused. Not in a bad way, but it, okay. The Lego Movie, right? Okay. Spoiler alert! If you have this, is not summer, but I'm gonna let it slide. Isn't it? When was it? Oh, it we was, got. Uh, oh, we got it I later. Think it was February, oh, wasn't sorry. it? Sorry, it was no, early. We got it. We got it later here. So yeah, I apologize. I've, oh, okay, I, I get it. Yeah, I, you have different releases. I, See, Canada's is very similar to the United States. Uh, okay. So could I? Am I? Am I allowed? Will, will you no, allowed? you're. You are. <laughs> okay, you are definitely allowed. Phew, because I have nothing else. I okay. want. I just want to talk about the Lego Movie now. So go e- ahead. Excellent. Okay, great movie. Loved it. It's funny. Whatever. Uh, yeah. But there's the. It's it's kind of revealed at the end that the 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 whole thing is also playing out in the real world, where a kid and his dad are having an argument about. The, the kid wants to build whatever and his dad will Ferrell, wants to glue everything together like in the the real like in the actual right so, so you, you find out that the movie you've been watching is just this kid's imaginary retelling of it's, how all all his cool toys are being hurt by his dad basically exactly it's his dad's toys and my question is what is is the lego mo- is the lego world is it real like, or, or is it a figment of the kid's imagination? So did I just watch something that did not does, does not exist at all, except for in this kid's mind? Or is it real in the sense that you see that little Lego figure, Emmett, move at one point? So did that kid make them real? Or were they already real? Or am I... Did I miss something? Am I, am I an idiot? No, that, that's... <laughs> is that the that's point, though, question. I guess? I feel, I, feel like, I feel like it's supposed to be real. Yep, okay. But I think it's supposed to be real to the kid. And yeah. that, in a sense, it is real, because when the Lego piece moves, it's definitely supposed to be Emmett. Yeah, okay, cool. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, and I I mean, I guess that, that whole thing was definitely, like, a huge surprise, and really, it's, like, one of those ones where you're on board with it or you're not. Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. Affect- I, I'm absolutely on board with it. I like it, but I was just I, it just kind of left me, like... Because, you know, at the start of all the Toy Story movies, there's usually a bit where he's playing with his toys or whatever. 
Exactly. I'm like, is that what this is? Is that what this whole movie is? Like, so yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, weird, but in a in a good way. I I I, I think in some way that 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 that's what it is. Okay. I, I think in some way that it's sort of like reminiscent of Toy Story, like um, like the uh the opening of Toy Story three, but a feature length version of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fair point. Cool. All right. Well, where I, like yeah. <laughs> sorry, go on. No, no, it's good. So th- th- that was the- that was the weirdest moment for you. You must yeah. not have watched a lot of weird movies. No, no, you're right. Okay, I gotta. Uh, uh, what about the bit where the Green Goblin gets Spider Man's blood and then turns <laughs> evil? I don't know. <laughs> whatever that. Happened. I was gonna say that one, but it's just yeah. That's it's... that's that. I I have tried to make sense of it multiple times. Yeah. And I I I don't get it. Like they out of all the exposition in that movie, that's the one they skipped. Yeah. Just like There's your, so much explaining of everything that's happening. Your blood is... But the one they skip is like... What? The Green Goblin disease? That's what it is? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's and, like and like and you and you test that like you wouldn't just take someone else's blood and put it in you. Like, that's crazy, right? Like, <laughs> like it's... Yeah, I probably should have ran with that instead of the Lego movie. So yeah, forget all that stuff I said about that movie that everybody loves and <laughs> understands, except for me. And I'm going to go with... <laughs> Weird magic blood in Spider-Man 2 or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what it is with those guys and their magic blood, but they fucking love yeah, it. Yeah, Robert Orsi or whatever his name is. Yeah, the internet hates yeah. that guy. Yeah. A lot. Because that, 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 was, that was one of the things I hated about Star Trek. Too, yeah, so. me too. Yeah. God. Anyway, that's a whole nother thing that we could, <laughs> we could get into. All right, next next topic. What do, you, uh, what do we got? We got biggest non-event film. Yes. Which, uh, for those unaware, is kind of like the, a mediocre kind of nothing film, which isn't offensive, but you leave and then you forgot that you even saw it. What about you? What's uh... Well, since we're including April, because there was nothing this summer, really, other sure. than uh, a, a mid-April release uh, draft day. Did you hear about that? No. Which one was that one? Uh, it was Kevin's Costner. Okay, yeah. No, I know that one. I didn't uh, say He's a bit, football yeah. dude that does stuff. Not a well, baseball guy like, for once. That's weird. He's really yeah, he's, he's yeah. Really expanding. Well, I it's mean, good. like honestly, it's it's not a bad movie at all. Mm-hmm. The main thing it suffers from is that it's Moneyball with Kevin Costner and about football. <laughs> okay, cool. Like sure. th- that. That's what the movie is, and yeah. it, it's the problem is is it doesn't have a great director like Bennett Miller mm. um, directing it, and it doesn't have great performances from Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I feel like if it came out before Moneyball, people would have praised the shit out of the movie. Oh, okay, right. Because, yeah. like, it's it's a decent movie, and it nails the, like, the behind-the-scenes logistics, and it manages to make football interesting for people who don't probably even watch football like I do. hmm So, like, it, it did everything that Moneyball did right. Yep. Just without, just not as well. Okay, So, sure. the fact that Moneyball came out first really, really hurt that movie sure. and made me completely forget it gotcha. but other than that i've been pretty like love it or hate it this summer so okay, far cool well I've, I've i've got one which a lot of people hated uh but a, a million days ways to die in the west oh okay. it's just have you seen it i i have seen it yeah i remember i i didn't do a review of it which is probably a sign that i didn't give enough of a shit to even sure. talk about it. so i didn't hate it enough that i wanted to rant about it yep That's which it. means i probably didn't hate it yeah that, yeah <laughs> sure yeah what a glowing recommendation. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's not it's not funny or interesting enough, and they kind of run the same kind of jokes into the ground again and again. It's like a mediocre episode of Family Guy, I guess, or, or a terrible episode of Family Guy if you hate Family Guy. Uh, it's just, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and it, everybody's fine in it. Like, a lot of people say that Seth MacFarlane can't carry a movie, but, you know, he does okay. Like, it's he's fine, and Charlie's Theron is fine, and Liam Neeson is fine, and some of the jokes are fine, and there's a good kind of little... Christopher Lloyd cameo, which gets spoiled in the trailers. So <laughs> it's just, yeah, kind of who cares, whatever, you know? That yeah, was that was, one, that yeah. was, I had definitely would have had the same, uh, the same reaction. Yeah. I honestly, I would, I would talk about it, but I don't remember even scenes from it. I can't, I, I can recall that Seth MacFarlane kind of just annoyed me, but it was mostly because he was, you know, the, was just like, I'm Seth MacFarlane and this is what it would be like if I, Seth MacFarlane, went to the old west yeah exactly that's that's exactly <laughs> what it is yeah 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 <laughs> so I, and th- that just really didn't interest me yeah and i like seth MacFarlane fine yeah sure, like i too. i was one of the few that didn't like hate his oscars thing i didn't see it at all but yeah it was all right yeah 
Yeah, I mean, he, he wasn't terrible. Sure. And that's, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's good just enough. mostly my reaction to most Seth MacFarlane. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. Um, except I, you know, it, it, I, I, that's the difference. I actually kind of like Ted, so. Yeah, I like Ted too. So, yeah. And it wasn't disappointing, this one. It was just whatever. I've got another one, a quick mention, and it isn't an, even Ooh. an April release. But 300 Rise of an Empire. I know this is way, way back. But, like, that was nothing. Like, that wasn't anything. <laughs> like, a completely unnecessary kind of prequel, sidequel, sequel. Uh, just with like just all green screen nonsense and whatever yeah the, well see i i absolutely loved um ava green in that film. oh no good point she's great yep you got me yeah like a- anytime she was on screen um i was absolutely uh like ecstatic about the movie and then every time she wasn't i was like oh yeah <laughs> i'm watching this movie <laughs> and then uh there's that that sex scene in that movie man Oh yeah, that's, that's like right. one of the weirdest, but also like coolest sex scenes. I know, I've right? Seen yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, I was so impressed by it. Yeah, so good job. It has, it, it's that movie. It's nothing to do about sex. It's just like a total power struggle between these two. Yeah, that's and it. I was like, I was like, man, that's something I haven't seen before. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the whole movie, but hey, You're right? Whatever. Yeah. All right, next category. Right. What do we got? Next category. We are getting into the final ones. Yes, we are. So we're going to get into the two worst movies mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of summer 2014. Yes. I think we've probably got... I'd imagine we both have Transformers on the list, right? Yes. Yeah. Transformers is definitely on there. And so look, let's it, do that. We'll do that together then. We'll do that first. Absolutely. Look, it's not a surprise. and I even No, think I think it's going to be on the list for a lot of people. Yeah, and it's not even... It's bad. I don't even th- even think it's as bad as the other two, the last two. I oh, think it's really? Even, I think it's because of the start. You know, it's weird. Like fifteen minutes in, I'm like, this isn't that bad. It's okay. Not not maybe that's maybe that's being generous. And then it just bottoms out entirely. Like just it it it's... just becomes everything you hate about trans or everything you love if you love Transformers movies. Like it's mm. well, see even. This is that's like the one thing I'm gonna disagree on you with with it for it. Sure, I think it's probably the worst Transformers movie. <laughs> okay, yeah. Only because like I was sitting there watching it, and I w- I wished I was watching Transformers um Dark of the Moon. Oh wow! By that's... the end, I was sitting there <laughs> wishing that I had just instead stayed home and watched Dark of the Moon. Because yeah. at least with Dark of the Moon, that final Chicago action sequence is shot well enough that I enjoy it. Okay, just sure. Just the action sequence. Because Michael Bay, despite all the shit that he, he gets, mm. and I give it to him, so I know. Yeah. I hated Pain and Gain every second of it. I haven't seen it. Um, mm. It's so bad. It's the worst <laughs> Michael Bay movie. Okay, wow. Um, <laughs> out of all... Like, I hate most Michael Bay movies. I like but Armageddon. I, I, I appreciate that's, that's the it. way yeah. he shoots certain action scenes. Because it's so unapologetic. It's so big and massive and he he just he throws so much shit into the frame yeah that eventually he hits gold yeah and every so often it happens i like the first transformers movie actually probably more than i should that's um, fair yeah and i mean the action works for the most part mm. and uh revenge of the fallen is just excruciating oh my god yeah I still... um but dark of the moon i can sit through simply because i like the action well enough yeah. But Transformers Age of Extinction is some of the worst action that Bay has ever shot. Ever. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. I couldn't even believe people who like Transformers like that movie. Yeah. I was that, like, they're saying, like, it's a return to form. It's everything that I wanted and more. And, ugh, you know, all that. Even, like, those, you know, those Decepticons that turn into blocks and then reassemble. Like, that's a terrible effect. And, yeah, uh, like, you can't even, like, at least the one thing that, which is good about these movies is... The, the mechanics of the Transformers, even if you hate the design, the way that they shift and move and whatever is is amazing, right? That's an amazing yeah, yeah. special and I mean, effects. Transformers Age of Extinction did one thing that I wish the other ones had too, mm-hmm. and that was give the Transformers more of a unique visual personality. Okay, yeah, because one was green and one was red or whatever. <laughs> Do you mean, yeah, like yeah. before I honestly couldn't tell. In this one, I was sitting there, I was like, okay. And they did something they should have done long ago. Celebrity voice actors. Sure, absolutely. Although John Goodman completely wasted, and no, I, di- I didn't. I didn't. He mm. probably didn't even know what movie he was. No, for. no. And like, the, there's that really, really weird moment. I don't know if you know this part, um, where he he John Goodman's Transformer 
like runs into like um someone wrote about this i can't i can't remember who wrote about this but some someone brought up that he like he they're on that uh alien lockdown they're on like the lockdown ship with all the the bots or whatever the yep. fuck and then there's like a vagina monster in a cage <laughs> No, I do not remember that. You don't remember this part? And no. there's just, like, a little monster in a cage, and John Goodman's just, like, looks at it, and he's disgusted by it, and then it spits on him. Oh, that's right. And, and he then he squishes it. it. That's right. Does he shoot yeah. it, or does he squish it? I can't remember. I don't remember. He just he just, he just, just kills it, because he's grossed out by it. I remember that. I do remember that. And I was that. like, yeah. what the hell am I watching? I couldn't even believe I was watching a Transformers movie. I was like, this is not a Transformers movie. Even by Transformers movie standards, this makes no sense, and it's retarded. <laughs> Like, it, it's unbelievable. And this is coming from someone who loves Mark Wahlberg so much. Oh, really? Mark Wahlberg yeah. could do no wrong in my books. Even The Happening, which I haven't seen. No, even even when he's bad, he's entertaining to me. Good point. So I, yeah. I enjoy watching Mark Wahlberg yeah. movies. So, and I was so pumped for Transformers Age of Extinction just because I thought, you know, a Transformers movie with Mark Wahlberg, I feel like this is right... Like, this is my thing. I feel like I should like this. Yeah. And I didn't at all. Yeah. Well, see, I, I didn't have that going in. I'm, I was like, this is probably going to be terrible. And then I was like, oh, well, <laughs> hey, it was. What a shock. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. So. Uh, no, it's 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 so dull. It's so lifeless. But, I mean, and just like the other ones, too. But it's 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 more of a test than the other ones for me. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's, it's also even longer than all the other ones. I mean, yeah. like, b- between between the this one and the first one, I think we've added a total of, like, 25 minutes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And boy, so, you, you, you really feel it, don't you? Oh, man. Like, I was sitting there. I, I This is the only movie that this should be a sign. This is the only movie that I actually had to check my phone and make tweets while I was watching it. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's never a good sign. And even when you like if somebody around you says anything, but you just don't care. Like, shut up! No, <laughs> it was crazy because other people were on their phone okay, too. Okay, cool. That, yeah, that's, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because no, nobody was paying attention. Nobody gave a shit. Sure. Everyone, and, and, like, we're getting to the end of the movie when there's action and stuff. And it was like, the action was so disengaging, which yeah. is unlike Michael Bay. Yeah. Even Michael Bay, this, I mean, this is the reason people slightly enjoy Transformers movies, is because the act, Michael, Michael Bay knows how to engage the audience he wants. Yep. That's it. But I, I don't even see that for this. I don't see how he engaged anybody in this movie. I, 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 I don't know. He hasn't. Well, he has. I guess Dinobots! I a, <laughs> that's right. In Dino. case I'm losing you, Dinobots <laughs> are here. <laughs> With no explained purpose. <laughs> but he's so clever, though, in the sense that, like, he knows what gets people into cinemas. You know, like, he know, like oh, he's God. clearly, this is aimed at the Chinese market, you know, which Yo, is why he's a marketing genius. Dollars. Yeah. And the fact that he knows, like, if he puts Dinobots in a movie, like, even if, like, I'm and going shoots, to see and that, shoots, I have shoots to them see in that. China. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. But, like, if he puts, the, you know, robot dinosaurs in it, like, even if I'm not a Transformers fan, I'm like, well, I have to, I have to go see that, don't I? Like, even though I know it's got to be terrible. Like, it's, he's, he's brilliant in that way. Like, he, get, he knows what's to get people in. He just doesn't know how to make a very good movie. Except for Armageddon, which is amazing, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm one of the, like, I don't, like, hate Michael Bay as a filmmaker. Sure, I just, yeah. I, I just hate a lot of his movies. Yeah. So many. Yeah, fair enough. Um, also, weirdest but, moment, Optimus Prime just flies off into space at the end, so... Yeah, I, I left, and yeah, the weirdest part is the movie they set up is one where he is literally going to go and try to brutally murder God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, he's gonna find God, he's gonna, like, kick him on the ground, and he's gonna, like, point his gun and just execute him like he did that one Transformer. Absolutely, in yeah. Number in, three. Tr- in true Optimus Prime style, yeah. <laughs> like, that's what these movies are about. It's 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 nuts. Yeah. There's I a- don't see how anyone could, like, if you just sit, like, took a step back, and thought about what the story is and what it's trying to say, I don't see how anyone could like this movie. Yeah, that's right. But also, <laughs> if you do like these movies, don't step back and think about it because you will kill yourself. So, <laughs> <laughs> take care of it. Anyway. Be safe. Sorry, that wasn't very, very nice. What, what, I'm glad we went into a really dark place We did. There. Thanks a lot, Michael Bay. Uh, but yeah. This is what you do to people. <laughs> but yeah. What's another one that you hated? Uh, look, uh, not a lot else. But Expendables 3, I've just like, just stop, stop doing this. Stop it. Like, I haven't watched the other two even, but I feel like it's... <laughs> you only watched the third one? I've only watched one? the third one, yeah, because I'm like, oh, we're going to, we're going to talk about it in the podcast or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I guess we'll go and see it. 
I should, you know, know what these kind of things are about. But the the hook is that they bring in all these old action stars or whatever, but they don't actually do anything with them or create an interesting premise and there's like terrible banter and it's just this weird kind of macho dialogue. And then halfway through, or not even, like a third of the way through, they swap out the old cast for a new cast. So even the people who like the Expendables are like, what? I don't want to see Callan Lutz ride around on a motorcycle. <laughs> and then only to bring back the old guys at the end to be like, this is how you do it. We're the Expendables. We're the best or whatever. And, and then it's just, it's, you know, it's probably CGI blood splatter. I don't remember. And it's just not good. And like Stallone <laughs> should just make Rocky and Rambo movies. Because even the terrible Rocky and Rambo movies are pretty hilarious. So... That's all I'm well, saying. Th- see, this is a weird one, because, I mean, like, as someone who's watched all three of them, I think the third one's probably the best one. Really? Wow. So okay. maybe 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 that just means they're all terrible. Yeah. And maybe I had the expectations because I thought it was going to be even worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the the third one was an improvement, because the okay. first one was really, really serious, mm. and that didn't work. Because you were like, no, these are, like, joke actors now kind of yeah. deal and you know it's like they didn't realize like they weren't in on the joke basically mm. and yeah. it was really almost embarrassing to watch the first one <laughs> sure yeah and then the, the the second one they changed the tone to the, the more goofy one you saw in the third one mm. but the action was absolutely dreadful okay <laughs> yeah so in the third one they fixed the action a little bit they tried to do some more ridiculous stuff mm. they they kept the tone that they liked and they had two good performances. Yeah. But are you talking uh, Antonio Banderas? Uh, yeah, Antonio Banderas absolutely destroys the movie in the weirdest... I haven't de- still I haven't yet decided if it's, like, a good or bad performance, but yeah. it's so entertaining that it didn't matter to me, at the, yeah. like, in the moment. It's like a weird live-action and... Puss in Boots kind of character. Like it's, yeah, and yeah. then watching watching his, like, one action scene he's got with, like, the, uh, the uh, UFC fighter, I was like, what movie am I watching right <laughs> yeah. now? <laughs> yeah and uh mel gibson absolutely killed okay yeah good point i was trying to think who the second one was i'm like is it wesley snipes i'm like oh probably not but no you're right mel gibson yeah i'd, I'd agree with yeah because yeah. he, he he's just sort of like um he's uh translating like his early uh cop movie kind of stuff his 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 early sort of like i'm crazy but not quite crazy kind yeah, of deal sure yeah and um you know he doesn't get to do much but the, the the few scenes that he has, he's you know he makes them count the lines of dialogue that he has, while everyone else just seems to like throw them around. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Ugh, <laughs> I just yeah. <laughs> and no. oh, I should okay. I'm gonna add this to also weirdest moment. Cool, good. Because you 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 definitely did you catch the thing at the end of the Expendables three where Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jet Li are a gay couple? I I didn't catch it, but Mason, no, sorry, Nick Mason, the. Uh, the other guy, he did, and he's like, "Are they gay? I don't know." And then it came out like in the in an art, it was like online, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, because someone, uh, one of one of the um, the journalists I follow, he actually asked the director if you know, are they gay? And he was like, "Well, you know, movies are up to interpretation, but when I shot it, I saw it as them being gay." See, that's amazing. Okay, I give full, but see, and full then credit I, for that. I, I thought it was a surprise, like like um like it just sort of happened at the end of the movie. Mm. But then I went back and I was like. They set this up. <laughs> it was actually set up in the few scenes that they have. Like, the part where um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just like, you know, if you guys, uh, you know, hate each other so much, why don't... If you guys want to argue so much, why don't you get married? Okay, then, right, yeah, yeah. And then he, when uh, when Harrison Ford calls him up to be like, hey, we're going to go help out the guys, uh, he shows up and Jet Li is the only guy Arnold brought with him. And he's <laughs> yeah. just like... Arnold was like, this was the only guy I could find on such short notice. And Harrison Ford was like, very short notice. As if, like, Jet Li was already there with him. <laughs> See, I took that as a short joke, but of course, like, it makes sense. You know what? If they should have told people that going in, that would have got more people into th- theatres. The people, like, people love or hate like, that. You're like, so I have crazy to see about the this. movie. Yeah. <laughs> It's 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 like the weirdest thing. And then for like weeks, all I had in this image of my head was Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jet Li as a couple. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> like rowing a boat together. Like, you know, yeah, like, you know, like feeding each other and yeah. <laughs> drinking wine together. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. Oh, that's brilliant. So well done, Expendables 3. You, yeah. Yeah. Well you done. You nailed it. You bloody nailed it. Yeah. And you got another one for worst, or...? Yes, worst, uh, for me, 100%, 
not even close. Transformers didn't even get close to hating mm. uh, as much as this. Maleficent. <laughs> I haven't seen it. All right. Maleficent. So, Maleficent, the appeal for the movie Maleficent is obviously the character Maleficent. Sure. One of Disney's classic villains that everyone really, really likes because Sleeping Beauty is... A, a, a good movie for mm-hmm. the most part yep and maleficent is definitely memorable uh she's unique um and you know she's she's a female character worthy of her own movie uh standalone movie in that sense so maleficent was one that i was actually kind of hopeful about but okay. at the same time i still had pretty low expectations going into it because it it you know j- just the look of the film i was not impressed who's the director um, other than um oh um i can't remember his name mm-hmm but what I know about him is he is primarily an art director. Great, good. Or slash uh, visual effects artist. Okay. So he, yeah, he hasn't directed anything. This is his first movie. Yeah, okay. Well, that's and hmm, so, hmm, interesting. So he's, he, he, he does, like, production design and visual effects. So the fact that the guy whose whole career is based on making movies look good and his movie didn't look good, I was a little <laughs> scared. So anyway, uh. Maleficent is basically the opposite of what any good Maleficent movie should have been. It was, they took a cool villain, and they took away uh, her coolness factor, they took away the fact that she's a villain, Mm -hmm. Yep. and then turned her story, rather than into being, um, you know, like, a woman who is just vengeful, she is in a rape-revenge story. Right, okay. (laughs) So she, now, basically, she gets... She she's like supposed to be this like sort of like angel type person with like eagle wings. Yep. And then one day a boy that she likes like totally um like uh date rapes her in a sense and by he like drugs her and then cuts her wings off. Why? Because if you if you cut it was it was something to do with um she was people didn't like her and the the village or something. <laughs> Good, <laughs> it was yep. like if, if if he cut the wings off and he brought the wings to the guy and said that he he killed her, then um he would get knighted or become king or it's it's really strange. I don't I don't remember the beginning that well. Okay. But I just remember I lost all sense of I couldn't believe the movie once it turned into like a rape revenge story. So I they, was like, so they, they were really? friends and then he drugged her and then cut off her wings to become the king or whatever is that yes is that, that that's right? that's essentially what happens and then the whole story is her not actually wanting to be a villain okay um and she just hates this king mm-hmm. so that's why she comes and she she puts the curse on the king's daughter yep um and they they absolutely nail the scene where she comes and puts the curse on the girl Okay, well, that, because it, of that's in the trailer, isn't it? And that looks quite good. Yeah, cool. yeah, like, they they nailed it, because it, it's directly from Sleeping Beauty. Just, yeah. you know, the, and they, you know, it visually looks cool, and Angelina Jolie looks great. Mm. And they, they nail that scene. But then the rest of the movie is, like, her sort of having, like, a trying, getting a more motherly relationship with the, the girl. Right. And get this, <laughs> once she starts falling into, like, she starts falling asleep because of the curse... She's, like, no longer any sort of villain at all. Like, she loves the girl and she wants to help her and she can't do anything because she can't reverse the curse. And it's all about true love waking her up. So what they did is they stole the ending from Frozen. What? Okay. Yes. They they flat out just stole the ending. We're the one where, you know, it's it's not true love's kiss Yeah. Uh, from a man. It's true love, like, the... You know, the sister's true love gotcha. that fixes right. it. Right, yeah. So with this, it's like Maleficent's love... For Ar- for Aurora is what wakes her back okay. up kind of deal. All right, yep. it's it's so it's so poorly shot. the The action is all um, it's sort of like fantasy esque. Like they wanted to go for like a really CGI ish looking Lord of the Rings kind of deal. Like it almost feels like The Hobbit, but even like handled with even less tact. <laughs> yeah, because like The Hobbit action isn't good that no, really I, either. I don't, I don't love those um, movies. Yeah. No. <laughs> so the whole movie feels directed by like a second unit director, like someone who doesn't care what the story is that they're telling. Like someone who's an it's, art direct, art deco director or whatever the, the guy's job was. It's who, yeah. Oh, it's it's so nuts. I I honestly Oh man. I left that movie and people were like, "Oh, well, it was it was okay, I guess." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> like my head hurt. I left yeah. the movie and 
you know, I, I can't get uh, too much into it because I would go on for far too long. But I ended up doing like a nine minute review of that movie. Yeah, just tear, tear and throw it. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if if you want to see me actually like back when I knew what I was talking about, because right now I can't even like remember all the things I hated about it, you can go watch that. I absolutely will go back and watch it. I'll link that below as well for anybody <laughs> okay. that's interested. Yeah, that sounds incredible. I love a, a full on ranty review. It's my favorite kind oh, of review. Oh man. So, yeah. The, the, yeah, they don't, I, I don't do them very often. Yeah. But every once in a while there's one movie that just annoys me so much. It just it hits just, you right. Yeah. In it's all the, per- the worst places. The perfect storm of like just terrible ideas and people and character development and whatever yeah. oh, <laughs> that uh, that makes me though think i need to see that now though like i need to see like is it is it at least not entertaining but you can it's watchable in the sense like, that it's so yeah, terrible it, right yeah and it, it's, it's watchable in that it's like pieced together where it's in inoffen- it'll be inoffensive to yeah. some people yeah so yeah cool yeah sounds great <laughs> two thumbs up <laughs> maleficent oh jeez. I guess well that that at least brings us to that the two best films of the year. Well, our top two. Yeah. Yeah. The the two. Yeah. Did did you have Boyhood um, in your top two? I feel like I should have it in my top two, mm-hmm. but it's it, it's one that just every once in a while, like the more I just it's slowly fading from me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I will. I will. Honestly, I'm gonna go number. I'll start with number two. I guess. Okay. Um, we probably have the same one yep. for in here, mm-hmm. uh, somewhere. But the, the, for number two, I'm gonna go with Godzilla. Okay, absolutely, good choice. Um, I I've talked a lot about Godzilla already. Mm. Um, all the stuff that I love, I loved about it, and I I got into the part where they, you know, I don't think people fully understood what the movie was going for in terms of the human story, mm. and that I think. Uh, you know, I I already gave this one best director. This is gonna this is this would win all my Oscars if I had an Oscars mm. kind of deal. Yeah, I, I've given this everything. I've given it like best directing, best like <laughs> new director, best, best action scene, best, best, giant best everything. Best giant now music. best of the summer. Yeah, sure. No, but it 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 totally accomplished everything it wanted to do. It nailed uh all the spectacle and framing framing the story alongside humans, but not you know with the humans emotionally. Yeah, just giving you that that sense of um you know scale and size and it's the only movie i saw this year that had me in genuine awe and had me and my friends completely like bewildered by the time we got to the final action scene yeah and cheering yeah oh really like, so that's really uncommon in australia like everybody just sits really quietly like it's not do they oh yeah yeah no, no the, the the first screening i was in on opening night everyone cheered like really? during that wow. part where it was like um especially during the part um, the first reveal of Godzilla, the the part where Godzilla gets back up after he was knocked down. Yeah, it was like round two kind of <laughs> yeah. deal. Everyone, everyone was so ecstatic. And then the part where Godzilla's up on the big screen and it was like savior, yeah, hero, mm-hmm. and everyone was like, hell yes, <laughs> awesome. Did you see yeah. it in three D and IMAX and all those kind of things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the first time I watched it, I, I saw it uh, just by myself on yeah. opening night cool. with a. Uh, cause I wanted to be there with like the big crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I went again and saw it with, uh, to, with all my friends. Awesome. Yeah. Cause it was, it's, it's un, unbe- unbelievably well directed mm. and I'm so glad that he's, he's been given Star Wars yeah. for that reason. Cause if, if he can capture anything similar or just, you know, aim, at least show that he can aim for a target and nail it like yep. he did with Godzilla. Absolutely. It's a shame um, that we're not getting the next one for a couple of years as well. Oh, four years, I think, is it, to the next one? Yeah, because now, now they're trying to, you know, make Godzilla another one of these big universes because everyone wants their own universe Of now. course, yeah, yeah. Because, so, yeah, it's same director though, isn't it? He's going to do part two. Yep. Right? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's really, really, that's a good sign of things to come, hopefully. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, you, and yeah. You, you can tell he, he loved it just by that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, so what's your for me? Two? Uh, I would, we haven't really. Oh, we've covered it quite a bit actually. Guardians of the Galaxy was just it's just a oh. fun time, I guess, at the movies. Look, and I haven't seen. There's a lot of the smaller films I haven't seen this year. Uh, but Guardians of the Galaxy for me was just it, it's a, it was a unique. It's a new property. It's you know it's obviously a unique set of characters, and a lot of the stuff in the movie has been done before, like a ragtag group of whatever and they have to stop an evil guy from whatever whatever and there's a space battle and all that kind of stuff but it's it's the first movie since like the original star wars trilogy or really the first two where they've kind of nailed the kind of fantasy sci-fi kind of um 
don't know genre yeah like the 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 adventure space opera exactly yeah like how many movies have tried to do that and have just completely failed like there's a few have come close i've said this before like serenity's great serenity yeah yeah and there's probably like serenity yeah there's probably some other ones i'm sure but it's just and a lot of people saying things like it took me back to my childhood and whatever and look it didn't do that for me i wasn't like oh this is like i'm a little kid again or whatever i just felt like this is a really good fun time you know, I, I enjoy these characters. You want to spend time in this world. It's it's a very tactile world, like because they they built most of the sets and whatever. Whenever they didn't have to do CGI, they didn't. Uh, James Gunn's director. Yeah, everything looks great. Yeah. Like the the environments, and you know, it, it's it's really bright and colorful in a fun way. Yeah. But it also has like this like lived in grittiness. Exactly. All the places they go, like the prison and stuff. Yeah. Like, it looks great. It's really you know, all grimy and yeah, grimy and colorful at the same time and. Obviously, the yeah, and it's mm. it, it's very uh, character driven movie. Yeah, which is I know I'm most Marvel movies tend like that seems to be their main thing is nail character. Yeah, yeah, and because Guardians of the Galaxy is such a character driven story that just because they nail characters so well, it makes you think it's such a a perfect movie in a sense. Because I mean, like looking at it, I could sit there and see the issues people have with it. I I've seen them. But I'm like, it don't, they almost don't matter to me yeah, in that sense, same. just because I love the characters so much. And I was sitting there and I had such a good time watching all these people bounce off each other in really fun ways. And such a uh, breakthrough performance for Chris Pratt as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. We've seen a lot and of And Batista. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah <laughs> exactly. And look, and this, this comedic timing is masterful. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and it's like, even like the finale, like, it, it's that shouldn't work and it shouldn't make sense. And I understand if you don't, because, you know, there's semi spoiler related. it's a kind of a dance kind of finale sort of not really if you haven't seen it like that <laughs> that that shouldn't work and i understand if you hate that but for me that played really really well somehow and that and that's only because and do you know do you know what it is it's because you spent the whole movie understanding who these yeah who these characters exactly. were exactly the thing is is, yeah. is comedy comedy doesn't work for people mm. when they feel it, it it's not within the realm of the characters they're watching yeah so that they spent that whole movie setting you up, knowing who these people are, and you just know when you watch it that 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 weird thing you're talking about that happens at the end mm. is is totally within the realm of possibility with him as a character. Yeah. So that's why you buy it because yep. they they told you exactly who this guy was, and that is something he would do. Mm. Exactly. And that's just that's just how well they nailed it, all these different characters. Yeah. Well said. And yeah. Yeah, especially with, you know, characters who I didn't expect to fall in love with. I didn't, you know, uh, Drax and Groot especially yeah. were the two I wasn't sure about. And I walked in loving them probably the most. Yeah. And and, uh, and again, they... we haven't even spoke about Rocket Raccoon, who's also amazing. Like, they're all... Oh, and phenomenal. Gamora, obviously, yeah. So I, I I think a lot of people just don't talk about him because he was the one who was so obviously gonna be yeah good yeah that's because right. like he he was the one they were showing off in the trailers yeah. right like look how cool and funny he is that's it so no one really expected it out of all the other characters yeah. that's it um but yeah they absolutely nailed Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. it's it it's tied for number one for my favorite that Marvel's done cool yeah absolutely what what's the number one for you. Oh, for, for me, it, it's Guardians and the Avengers. Oh, cool. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, back, back. Because I, I know a lot of people have issues with the with the Avengers as well. But I, the only thing I have about the Avengers is I think the the third act is the best thing Marvel's done. Okay, the whole sure, movie, yeah. not so much maybe. Yeah. But the the third act where all the Avengers are getting together in that final action mm. scene, I I feel something <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. that uh, Marvel probably is never going to be able to capture again yeah. unless they try really yeah. freaking hard. I'd love to see and something like that. If they're going to fire again, Edgar Wright, then... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, Age of Ultron looks like it's it's shaping up well, but yeah, remains to be seen, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. definitely. What about you for number one um, movie of the year hmm. so far? Well, I... Honestly, I would probably say Guardians is up there. Okay, cool. Yep. I would say Guardi- Guardians was the one I probably uh, like enjoyed the most. So it was great that it it was sort of closer to the end of summer. Mm-hmm. It was probably the last like great movie I saw in theaters. Yep. But yep. no, I would I would probably say because uh, Godzilla. Yeah, I would probably say Dawn of the Planet of the Apes then. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Dawn yeah. of the Planet of the Apes simply because uh, we talk about this one a lot too. We actually. did. Yeah. It's yeah. really hard. Um. Well, as a as a Canadian, I get a lot of flack for this, but I'm like a really strong, um, I have a really strong voice on something like, let's say, gun control. And yep. we're not going to make this about politics, sure, but yeah. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is very much, um, you know, like a great story with great acting, 
great performances uh, and great action and all that. And then it, the message is just something that's so close to my heart mm. that I was sitting there and I was just so pleased. You know, the, the fact that it, it doesn't quite feel like a blockbuster, that it feels just like, you know, a, a really well-made Oscar season film just with digital apes and yeah. a lot of money behind it. Sure. Yeah. And that's something I can't say about any other movie I saw so far this year. Yep. I don't think there's many movies like that. No other movies had digital apes. You're correct. That was this is no, the only digital one. apes yeah. are a rare thing. <laughs> yeah. Now that's a great choice. But and the thing is as well, I've got there's so many in my head that I could I would like I enjoy like I would say Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, Planet of the Apes. Probably I'd say even Godzilla. Like I'd all enjoy them probably equally and for different reasons. You know, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like that. I always have trouble doing like best of the year yeah, lists. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. I, I, I sit there and I go, well, I like, like, like my top ten list last year. My, my top six. I basically said, yeah, they're all number one. Yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> I was like, because I love them all just yeah. for different. Like, how can you go and compare something like I don't know, like Wolf of Wall Street to whatever? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Something yeah. like her. Yeah, like they're different movies, exactly. right? With different but goals, both... different ways of achieving them. Yeah, you know. So it, it's such a great summer. It's hard to narrow it down into into what's yeah. the best. But no, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and Godzilla were the two for me that set out to achieve their goals mm-hmm. and absolutely destroyed them and then some. Yeah, absolutely. and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes a definitely had the most like cohesive uh narrative and nailed its themes the best yeah but in terms of enjoyment you know guardians of the galaxy <laughs> was yeah. up there as well we're just going through all the all the movies now yeah we are, we are um, yeah maybe we'll uh yeah maybe we'll wrap it up but Let's it, just say it, it all really the movies that we, we we got to talk about all these movies so much earlier on i feel like i i said everything i needed yeah. to say that's all right everybody can, already everybody if you know can go back and go watch that. part one where we yeah. talk about more stuff exactly <laughs> Yeah. So I guess the last <laughs> thing we'll cap it off with, look, the movie's, the, the year's not over yet. There's still however many months are left. Four or five? I don't know. Uh, what, what, what are you still looking forward <laughs> yeah, to? How many months are in a year? What? <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's, it's different in Australia and Canada, isn't it? So, you know, it's, it's so confusing. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. What, so what are you, what are you looking forward to? Looking forward to the most. Mm. Hmm. Well, I mean, like September, there's nothing for the most part. Yeah. There's the Maze Runner, I think, but I'll, yeah. Okay. Um, I know the Box Trolls comes out, and okay. I mean, I'm I'm slowly passively looking forward to that yep. just because I like that animation style. Mm-hmm. But no, out of out of the movies I'm looking forward to the most, I mean, I'm just gonna get this out of the way now since we both have to say it. Sure. Uh, Interstellar. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Because you know, it's 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 a new Chris Nolan blockbuster. Everyone you know loves them mm. so you have to say it and i mean the trailers have been great so yeah. i totally i totally get the hype i'm not like <laughs> looking down on it or anything but yeah. you know it's it, it's just it feels like that's the most obvious choice i agree yeah um but no i'm looking forward to david fincher's gone girl absolutely yeah ben affleck and which comes out very soon actually i yeah. think it's just it's under a month away now yeah no that that looks terrific yeah and but i i i read the book for it it's fantastic book and it's got a lot to say um in terms of uh like feminism and the female perspective but also it's a really surprisingly people like you won't be able to tell by the trailer but it's going to be a very funny movie oh really okay it's going to be like sort of like a satirical look at marriage Mm -hmm. and uh also like you know like journalistic uh immorality Mm. like things like um celebrity talk shows and whatever the fuck like yeah those people who are just totally like eating society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, that's what Gone Girl is, and David Fincher, I love his style. So yeah. seeing like that great story applied through his lens is just really, really exciting. To yeah, me. fantastic. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm all for that. Well, you took you, you took the two that I was going to say, but that's okay. I'm gonna, oh, I feel I'm so gonna, terrible. Ah, pff, it's, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> this this one is not going to be good, but I'm looking forward to it because there's a bit where. It just looks completely crazy, and I think it might be terrible, but in a good way, or good in a terrible way, I don't know, whatever. Dracula Untold. <laughs> this looks... <laughs> really? Looks like mental. Like, no, I, look, I just want to see what it is. I, I'm like... Because <laughs> I, I like Luke Evans. There's a bit where he controls some bats and they punch some soldiers. Like, <laughs> I just want to know... It, it, yeah, it, it what, looks like the good kind of weird, Yeah, right? what it, is It looks this? like the kind of weird where you're like... I, I, I want to see that just to see what it's all about. Exactly. Kind of like a lot of money went into it. I just want to know what's going on there. So, yeah, look, 
I would I would want I don't want to see it above God Girl or Interstellar, but I I see the trailers and I'm like I don't hate that. I want to see it. I'm confused. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Definitely uh yeah, Dracula Untold and also because I love the first one and even though it's probably not going to be good. My two choices are so different than yours. Uh Hot Tub Time Machine 2 <laughs> because I love Hot Tub Time Machine. And it, uh, Th- those those definitely were not, I, I thought when you were going to make up make other choices I thought you were going to say like fox catcher I, or, um, oh look don't get me wrong I do want to see those absolutely but I just <laughs> no I, honestly I, I don't think it's a bad thing I think yeah. it's kind of endearing that you're so excited yeah. for these movies it just shows how shallow I am <laughs> and I just like guys you know who could control bats no. and monsters no it's the opposite you know yeah. it, it, it shows that you know you're, you're going to give movies that might not necessarily look that great the chance that's they right. deserve yeah, or that, don't deserve thank you we'll see <laughs> but yeah but yeah look I'll, I'll i'll watch anything but yeah uh yeah those look like movies that i will probably see or just you know wait till you know blu-ray or whatever you know <laughs> so yeah there's a ringing endorsement right there yeah well but, if not you could you'll still have things like nightcrawler and foxcatcher to look forward exactly. to there's gonna be other good movies coming out that's right exactly Th- those are a well, given. hopefully good movies yeah and i guess the third hobbit's coming out but i don't care oh um, at all. yeah no i'm i was over the hobbit i was over the I... hobbit 10 minutes into the first hobbit <laughs> <laughs> no the, the, the second one was slightly better from the yeah, first one I'd which agree. was garbage so that. yeah <laughs> but what I remember about The Hobbit too, mostly was it was Boxing Day here, what twenty sixth of December. Yeah, Boxing Day, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Boxing Day. Okay, cool. Okay, it's not just a weird Australian dates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like it was like forty degrees outside Celsius, so like a very very hot day. And it was I was supposed to be down at the beach, and I'm sitting there watching The Hobbit. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, I don't want to be in this fucking cinema. So that that didn't help. Like my you know. My view of the Hobbit. Great dragon, though. Good work on the CGI dragon. Well done, I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, like, the, there's one good scene in both movies, and they both just have the actual Hobbit, who's <laughs> yeah. in the name of the movie, yep. talking with with things. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, <laughs> that, you've, you've nailed it. But I am interested in seeing somebody cut those three movies down into one movie, like just a fan edit. I'd love. Yeah, to- if, 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 I would love to see someone just cut the orc subplot where they're just hunting them for yep. no apparent reason yep. i would love to see all of that just cut yep me too because anytime in those movies there's two cgi orcs like just talking <laughs> to each other about something i completely zone out yeah and i just i just imagine like white noise is playing <laughs> that's it and, and then because you know you're just gonna watch the orcs heads get de- decapitated yep, later on so right, whatever exactly it's yeah. gonna fly into the camera and you're gonna be like oh yeah this is a children's movie i forgot <laughs> <laughs> Where are they more? We need more decapitated orcs. <laughs> I'm really worried about Peter Jackson. I just anyway. I guess that's a whole crazy. other thing. I don't, I, let's not get into it. We're probably wasting <laughs> no, enough. Yeah, of we'll do that. Time. Yeah. We'll do that another time. Anyway, yeah. there's lots of good movies coming that's out. That's right. Um, Hot Tub Time Machine Two. Go check it out. <laughs> Hot Tub Time Machine Two. Yeah. Interstellar. Yeah. They're interchangeable. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, this has been really fun, man. We should do this again. Yeah, we should yeah. definitely look into doing this more often yeah. doing something i think we we talked a lot yeah we did we're probably gonna have to edit this down quite a bit but yeah that's all right <laughs> so yeah guys thank you very much for listening uh to this and enduring uh kind of you know shouting into the internet for nearly two hours it seems uh thank you very much josh for you know for teeing this up oh. with me it's a it's been really really fun the no wonders problem. of technology of have brought continents together amazing look at that yeah look at that. and neither are from america i don't know about you but the majority of my audience is american me too so yeah me too a- americans are watching a canadian and australian talk about things that they like that's right <laughs> so if we said anything that offended you we apologize we but we're too. not in your country so you can't do anything that's right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm way too far away it's like a 20 hour <laughs> flight you'll never find me so. We don't we don't care about you Michael Bay fans. <laughs> That's right. Deal with us. Deal with us. That's all right. <laughs> all right, man. Uh thanks everyone. Have a great uh rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Signing off.